Hey there future college students, my name is Kevin Landry and I am the co-owner of the Extra Point ACT Prep Company. Now my question for you today is this, are you getting the improvement that you need on the ACT just by watching the ACT tips and strategy videos. Now, as ACT prep professionals for the last 10 years, we know that ACT tips and strategies are very important. You do need to have pacing strategies and test strategies and things of that nature. But if you wanna get the really big jumps, the three and four and five points improvement, you really have to know your ACT skills. Now before we get too far into what ACT math skills that you need for the test, do me a quick favor and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so that you'll be up to date on more videos like these. We're going to be doing a whole series of playlists on all of the most common ACT math questions that you can see on the test and you don't want to miss any of those particular videos that will be coming out in the near future. Okay, so the purpose of this video and video series is to actually provide you with the ACT math skills that you need to make those big jumps on the ACT math test. Now for these videos, I've picked out the most common ACT math skills that are tested and then I've gone into those skills and I've picked out the most common ACT questions that come from those ACT math skills. Now before you watch the rest of this video, what I really would like you to do is I'd like you to go into the description of this video and there's a document there that I use for the remainder of the video. It's got a handful of math questions on it. I'd like you to stop the video, give yourself about five minutes to work those math questions, and then come back and play the remainder of this video and see how you did. Not only will I give you the answers, I will also show you some very good strategies to work these ACT math questions. So not only are you going to get to learn all of the ACT math skills, I will show you some strategies that go along with it as well. Good luck and I'll see you at the end of the video. When you finish, I'll give you some more information on some good ACT math prep that you can also use along with these videos. All right, welcome back to our pre-algebra playlist where we're going to cover the most common ACT problems from pre-algebra. In this particular video, we're going to focus on probability. Now, when I started doing ACT prep over eight years ago, probability was one question and one question only, and it's kind of like the one that we're about to look at. It was the old, there are so many marbles in a jar, what are the probability of reaching in and grabbing a green marble? You know, you figure out the total amount, you figure out how many green marbles there are, you divide them, you get the probability. But in the last two or three years, ACT has really started to branch out the types and the depths of probability questions that they, that they ask you. And they don't just ask you one. On the last ACT test that I evaluated, there were actually four probability questions on that particular ACT, and they're all different than each other and all to different degrees of difficulty. So this is an area where the ACT is surely branching out statistics and probability, and you definitely want to know all the given parts. So let's take a look at some variety of questions in this video. We've got five separate questions. They're not necessarily difficult, but it just goes to show you the different types of knowledge that the ACT wants from your particular probability section. So keep in mind that probability can be written in one of three formats. You can be written as a fraction, it can be written as a decimal, it can be written in percentage form when you're talking about the odds of something happening. And that's what probability tells us. It's the percent chance that an event is going to take place or the odds that, it, that an event will take place. So this first question is very, I guess you could say, kind of standard to what you would see, but it's got a little extra in it. So it says there are 20 colored pencils in a box, four red, five green, 10 blue, and one black. You pick a pencil without looking. What is the sum of the probability of picking a red pencil and then picking a black pencil? So a few things in here that can be a little tricky. First of all, it says the sum of the probability. So what we really need to do is we need to figure out what is this, the probability of just picking a red pencil. And if we look at this, there are four red pencils out of a total of 20. So that's the probability of picking a red pencil. Now we could simplify that fraction and that would be fine, 
But just for as it stands right now, the probability of a red pencil without looking is four chances out of 20. Then we want the probability of picking a black pencil. So the probability of picking a black pencil is one out of 20. And so if you look at our answer choices, one out of 20 is an answer choice. Four out of 20 would actually reduce to one fifth, which is also an answer choice. So you can see B and C there are bait answers, but they clearly stated we wanted the sum of those probabilities. So we need to actually add those together to get 5 out of 20, which reduces to 1 fourth. And that gives us answer choice D. Now, here's, here's the reality of the matter. Years ago in the ACT, if you could just do one of those, that's all you would have to do, and that would be a simple probability problem, and you'd be done with it. But you can kind of see here that they're, they're layering on a little bit of additional knowledge that you need to know. Okay, it says the probabilities for five events is listed in the following table. Which event is least likely to occur? So here's the thing. We need to understand, first of all, I told you that probabilities can be a decimal, a fraction, or a percent. So they gave us all of our probabilities in decimal form here. Now, the probability or the odds of something happen if we're in a decimal form go from 0 to 1.0 or 0% to 100%. With 0 being no chance of it happening, 1.0 or 100% being that it's absolutely going to happen. So anything in between has different odds of it happening. So the smaller the number, the lower chance of it occurring, the higher number, the better chance of it occurring. So what it says here, it says which event is least likely to occur? So we're just basically looking for the smallest probability here. And if we look at these numbers, 0.25, which if you wanted to convert it to a percentage would be 25%, is the smallest of all of the events. And so that would be answer choice A. Now, this is purely definitional. If you get this problem in the first 10 questions of the ACT, you need to be able to look at this question, immediately know what the answer is. And this question should really not take you more than five seconds to answer and quickly move on. This is a gimme, and you need to get this right 100% of the time. Again, the ACT has gone and given us a table of different events and the various probabilities. However, they take our knowledge of probabilities a step further here. It says the probabilities of two independent events will occur are given in the table below. So first of all, they throw some vocabulary at us. Independent events just basically means that the two events do not affect each other. So whatever event A is, if I do that, it has no bearing on event B actually doing any uh, or affecting event B. So independent events, they basically don't affect each other. So it says, what is the probability that both event A and B will occur? And then they gave us this, this little this little mathematical thing. It says probability of event A and B. Well, you need to know that when you see the word and in something like that, that you want to multiply the two probabilities. And so we know that the probability of event A is 0 0.2, and we're going to multiply that times the probability of event B, which is 0 0.4. So if we multiply those two values together, we're going to get 0 0.08. And we can see that that is answer choice A. So make sure that you understand that when you, when you use the word and, when it re relates to probabilities and multiple probabilities, that we're going to multiply those together. Okay, if we look at this question, we can see it gets a little bit wordier. There's a little bit more going on here. Notice that the answer choices are put in percentage form, and we have a frequency table. So we talked about frequency tables in a previous video, how frequency tables can be used in percentages, and frequency tables can be used in averaging problems. And we can see now again, frequency tables are now being used in probability. So let's see what we're looking at here. It says Lena will pick one card at random from a pack of 25 baseball cards. Each card features the fielding position for one of 25 different baseball players. Each player in the pack has only one fielding position, so no multiple positions in this particular case. The table below lists the frequency of fielding positions in the pack. 
what is the probability? So this tells us it's not an averaging problem, it's not a percent problem, but it's a probability question. What is the probability that the card Lena picks will feature an outfielder or a pitcher? So just like in the previous problem, we said that anytime you have the word and in a probability question, that we would be multiplying it. Well, anytime we have the word or in a probability question, that means we're going to be adding their probabilities together. So we want to find the probability of getting an outfielder. Then we're going to add that to the probability of picking a pitcher. So if we look at this, we can see that the frequency of outfielders is 7 out of the 25 baseball cards or the 25 different players. The pitcher is 8 out of the 25, and then of course we want to find the probability of picking one or the other, so that means addition, giving us a total of 15 over 25, and then of course you can look at the answer choices and none of them are fractional, so this is going to require us to convert to a decimal and then to a percent form, and we can see that 15 over 25 is the same thing as 60% which is answer choice E. So you can see that your percent skills are going to come in handy with probability. In our last problem, we take your basic probability skills and we kind of add a little bit or work backwards a little bit to, to the knowledge base here. So it says, a bag contains 30 marbles, all solid colored. Each marble is blue, red, or yellow. If the probability of choosing a blue marble is two-thirds, and the probability of choosing a red marble is 1 6. How many yellow marbles are in the bag? So what we're really trying to figure out is we need to know how many blue marbles there are and how many red marbles there are so that we can ultimately figure out how many yellow marbles there are. Now there's multiple ways that you can do this and I'll show both set setups. So for instance, the probability would normally be the number of blue marbles over 30. So that would give us our probability. Well, we said that that equals to two-thirds. So you could basically cross-multiply and figure out how many blue marbles there are. Now, you could also do this problem by just simply taking two-thirds and multiplying it by 30, which gives us a total of 20 blue markers. So whichever way you decide to go about doing it, you should still come up with a total of 20. And I think if you look at the ratios side by side, it seems pretty reasonable that 20 would be the correct answer. It says the probability of choosing a red marble is 1 6. So I'm going to take 1 6 and this time I'm going to multiply it times 30 again, which tells me I have 5 red marbles. Now, if we have 30 marbles total and we have red, blue, our yellow. To find our yellow marbles, we're just going to simply take our 30 marbles and subtract the 20 blue and subtract the 5 red, which is going to leave us with 5 yellow. So simply A is the correct answer. Now, if you wanted to test this, you could actually test each answer and look for the probabilities. So what you should know is that 2 thirds plus 1 6 plus the missing probability should equal to 1. And if you recall, all probabilities should add up to 1 or they should add up to 100. So if you don't mind working with fractions, you could have easily added up the probabilities to see which one was the missing probability and then use that to multiply times 30 and you could have figured out that there were five yellow marbles that way. Whichever way you go about doing it, as long as you understand how to back your way into the correct answer is, is all that you need to know how to do. So that is a very good mix of probability questions. There are a lot more than that. Things such as expected value, dependent events, you definitely want to take a look at some of the information on our online course or some of our other videos where we go into much greater detail about probability. I cannot emphasize to you that the ACT has really taken this one as a priority and this is showing up a lot more on the ACT. Okay, now that you finished those problems, I hope they didn't give you too much trouble and you learned a few strategies to go along with them. So these are some of the ACT math pre-algebra skills that you're going to need 
for the ACT math test. Now, these are generally the easier questions and you should get these 100% correct. Now, there's 10 other videos that go along with ACT pre-algebra. So if you check in the description below, I've provided a little link to each of those videos. Also, if you go to the YouTube, our YouTube channel, you'll see the playlist. We'll have a playlist of the pre-algebra videos as well. And coming up a little bit later, we will also do playlists for the ACT math sections for Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, Coordinate Geometry, Plane Geometry, and Trig. So basically keep an eye out for those. Um, always check back to our YouTube channel to see if they are up and they will have playlists for those. Now, as far as ACT prep is concerned, we do have a very good ACT prep course that we provide online. It's very affordable and if you follow us on our social media, we do give discounts from time to time for our online prep class. So be sure to follow us on Facebook or Twitter uh, or Instagram and also keep up with our YouTube channel because from time to time in videos, I do give you coupon codes for discounts on our ACT online prep course. So for a very cheap price, you can get a very, very good prep course. Many of our students go up four, five, six points. We've had students go up as much as 12 points using this program. So we look forward to seeing you in the future. Hopefully you'll take our course. If not, just keep watching our videos. That'll get you a long way to improving your ACT score. Thank you for helping us out. Share these videos with a friend. Tell as many of your friends as you can about them. Uh, we appreciate your support on our YouTube channel. And again, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell for future notifications. Thank you.